Welcome to this Flex Physio video about Dupuytren's disease. What it is, what causes it, and what can be done. Dupuytren's disease is a genetic condition which affects the palm of fascia. This is a tough layer of connective tissue which sits under the skin of the palm to reinforce and stabilize it when we grip. People with Dupuytren's disease noticed a very gradual development of thickening in parts of the palm, most often towards the top of the palm over the big knuckles. Any digit can be affected, though for some reason the ring and little fingers are most likely. This thickening pulls tighter, forming fibrous nodules or cords which may eventually pull the affected digit down into a bent position. This process may take many years. Dupuytren's disease is benign, meaning a contracture can't spread from one finger to another. But it is surprisingly common, and in severe cases can lead to significant disability. The same condition may occasionally affect the soles of the feet, which have a similar protective layer of connective tissue. Dupuytren's disease is sometimes cheekily called Viking's finger as it occurs in people with some part Scandinavian or Northern European ancestry. However, it may skip several generations, so some patients are taken by surprise when the condition shows up unexpectedly. Age is a very significant risk factor. The condition usually develops after the age of 50, and tends to be more severe or aggressive if it starts in earlier decades, while men are more commonly affected than women. Other factors associated with increased risk of Dupuytren's disease include smoking and diabetes. This graph of data from the United States shows the increased incidence of Dupuytren's disease in men and women as they get older. It is estimated that over 10 million people in the US have the condition, or about 3% of the population, but the majority of those people don't have bent fingers yet. This graph is from the website dupuytrens.org, which is full of useful information about the condition. Look in the video description for a link. Dupuytren's disease almost always develops insidiously. In other words, an otherwise normal hand will start to show signs of the disease for no obvious reason. Occasionally, Dupuytren's disease may develop after hand trauma. Some thickening or roughness of the skin is usually the first thing noticed. It may be mistaken for a callus. Over time, the thickening gradually increases, sometimes forming long cords, sometimes raised nodules, and sometimes deep pitting in the skin of the palm. There are exceptions, but the process is usually completely pain-free. If the palm of fascia becomes tight enough, it starts to limit how far the finger joints can straighten. Most commonly, this is the MCP joint, the big knuckle at the base of the finger. In some cases, the PIP joint in the middle of the finger is affected, and occasionally it may affect both joints at the same time. The diagnosis is usually based on the appearance of the palm of thickening and the way it changes over time. Diagnostic ultrasound can be used to confirm the diagnosis if necessary. Other conditions to be excluded include trigger finger, a ganglion on the flexor tendon sheath, Cantodactyly, ulnar nerve palsy, and various soft tissue growths. Various things have been tried to stop the Poitrin's contractures from slowly pulling the fingers down, including massage, stretches, splinting, and cortisone injections. But none of these have proven to have any benefit in clinical trials. The thickened contracting tissue can be removed surgically, or can be injected with an enzyme to break down the collagen fibers. These techniques are often effective at restoring finger motion, but are quite invasive and may result in significant scarring. Unfortunately, the contractures often come back again after the surgery. Some people end up having multiple operations, and the more often surgery is repeated, the less benefit is gained. The goal of treatment is to limit the number of surgical procedures any given finger might need in your lifetime. Therefore, surgery should not be considered until the finger is bent enough that it is starting to get in your way and make daily tasks difficult. This picture shows a patient with a long surgical scar after removal of a contracture that was pulling his index finger into a bent position. After surgery, a splint is not always needed, but may be helpful to hold the finger straight and stop the surgical scar from tightening up aggressively. We hope this has been a helpful summary of Dupuytren's disease, what causes it and what can be done about it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.